Hey everybody, Plasma 1945 rocking an SU-33 and 27s in this video. A quick guide to unguided rockets. That's right, you need a guide for unguided rockets. Russia's favorite way of delivering explosives downrange with no brain power required. Who needs laser guidance when you can just fire dumb rockets and take things out at a premium? I'm going to be using a test map here that I've set up. It has sets of APCs and soldiers at either end of the runway. The description has a link to the map file. You can download it and give it a try yourself. Now we've got additional individual units set up in the middle of the runway. We've got some T-72, T-90 and T-80 tanks. These tanks are for individual hunting that these rockets are very good for. We've got some trucks. We've got a column of Abrams and we've got a column of APCs. We've got some hardened structures as well off the coast. We've even got some ships. We've got an Arleigh Burke and a Molnia intercept boat so all those are there for you to use and practice on but let's jump in real quick into the cockpit and i promise to make this video quick but there'll be an add-on video about more of these rockets and which types they are so in all the russian planes and fc3 planes you press number seven to go into air to ground mode your symbology will change on the left side you're going to have an arrow that comes down and once it's between the two solid boxes on the left side, you are within firing parameters. The top is the maximum launch range. The bottom is the minimum launch range. In the center, you're going to see your targeting reticle that will float around on the screen based on your bank and flight. And in the bottom right hand corner will be the selected weapon type, which you can change by pressing D or your key that you bound to change your weapon type. Planes are able to carry different rocket types and different rocket type munitions in pods and will usually fire in salvos of two. In this case, I'm using marking rockets for identifying targets for when you're flying with, say, a helicopter crew. I use the SU-33 and 27 because you've got some incredible flight characteristics on these planes, which means that you can very quickly extend by going into full afterburner and then pull back on the stick and come around for another pass. Also in these planes, there's very few chances for AAA to hit you because you can go very fast over towards the target and then pull away just as quickly. So let's do another pass here. In this case, we've got an Arleigh Burke. You can press D to choose your air to ground munition. And again, put the pepper on the target, go into a dive, do not fire in level flight, fire the rockets and then extend. Here is the rocket pod view. To marking rockets are out from each of the wings and they hit the Arleigh Burke and set off the smoke. In this video I'm using marking rockets, they're good for designating targets, but the next video will be about each individual type of rockets, it'll be a bit longer and have a lot more detail in them. So get that subscribe and like and just watch for the next video, it's going to be up probably tomorrow or the day after. But after you've done your awesome approach and fired off your rockets, what do you do? Well, you want to get back on target and we'll cover that here really quickly. And I'll explain to you why I like to use the SU-33 and 27 platform, although you can use choppers and an SU-25 just as well. Because the flanker isn't armored, as soon as I've released the rockets, I go full afterburner and extend. I know I need to come back for another pass, so I will start to make a sharp 180 degree turn. As I come through the turn, I watch my airspeed to make sure I don't stall, but usually I'll cut my thrust about this point to mill or below. This way, by completing the turn, I bleed off the excess airspeed and I'm in place for another run. Similarly, you can go into a vertical, so max afterburner again, at the top of your vertical climb, do a complete inversion, level your plane back out, cut your thrust down to mill or even below that. Sometimes I just go idle. This is depending on how much altitude you've got. And then you can come in for another strafing pass on the targets. So you can either go sideways or you can go into the vertical. Just make sure to throw that afterburner back in to get away from the AAA. All right, so let's put all this back together. I've got some targets marked. These are the trucks that are by the coast. I've got a whole bunch of fragmentation rockets spray into the targets. I'm at about 460 kilometers on a good dive there. There's some AAA coming at me, some ground fire, level out, full afterburner right along the waterline, and accelerate. 
what I want to do is I want to get to about 900 kilometers an hour, at which point I start pulling back on the stick to go into a vertical, building up speed, still climbing. Right at the top of the arc, I hit about 700 kilometers an hour as I climb up. Just as I get to about 400, 500 kilometers an hour, I cut back on my throttle and invert my plane. Now I'm going to let the gravity take me back right down towards those targets. Using the zoom capability within the HUD, I zoom in on my targets. In VR, you can use spyglass zoom to get a little bit closer to spot those targets. As you can see in the dive, I'm already back up to almost 600 kilometers an hour. Spot some more targets and unleash more rockets. Let's see how it looked from the ground to the truck cam and see them all getting blown up. Yep, the fragmentation rocks are definitely getting them. So hopefully you've liked this shorter format, you've enjoyed this video, and have some more capability for your SU-27 and 33. Next video will have a lot more detail, so make sure you subscribe, like, and drop a comment. What do you think of unguided rockets?